Or is there church on Sunday? No. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, so far, we are having church on Sunday service. It starts at 10 o'clock, so please go by the guidelines that are on the website of our Facebook Praise Chapel. And also, there is morning prayer tomorrow. Okay, it starts at 8 o'clock. So please join us, and it is highly required to wear a mask as well. So hopefully you can join us for tomorrow morning prayer. Um, for now on, Bible studies will still be on live stream. So if you have any questions about that, please messenger. Um, you can messenger me on Facebook, or uh, if you have mine's or my wife's number, you can text us. Okay, so with that being said, amen. Let's pick up today's offering. And the uh, offering scripture I have tonight, this evening rather, is found in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. You know, the high honor of being a man or a woman of God is God calls us his child, and we call him Father. So, as a child of God, amen trying our best to be obedient to him when we read our word there's many hundreds maybe even thousands of scriptures that say about giving to the lord offering or tithing missionaries or whatever it is that god lays in our hearts when i read this scripture we know that we do it to please him because when we please our savior his favor is upon us so I encourage you, even though you're not in church, continue giving your tithes and offering. Amen. That way you don't have to avoid pastor <laughs> when you do go to church. <laughs> so we do have offering envelopes. If you need one from us or you just want to go by the church when it's open on Sunday for an offering envelope, we understand if you don't want to go in because of the coronavirus. Or if you just continue giving through Zao and you need that information, you can find it on the Facebook um Grace Chapel, Vaughan Park, Facebook page. Amen? Any other? Okay. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to get into the Word. Let me get set up here. Today's title of the message is, Was That God's Voice or Not? That's the title of the message today. Was That God's Voice or Not? And we're going to read, in Romans 8, verses 13 and 14. But before, before I read that, amen, I'm going, going to read a little summary that is on today's lesson. It says, As believers, we should be ever alert to receive guidance from the Lord, but sometimes we are not uncertain if an alleged leading is of the Lord or, or not, um, or not given by the word of God. The clear principles that we listen to determine whether it's God's voice or not. Let's read the scripture. For, if, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let's just say sons and daughters. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you just help me to present this message. Let us all learn from it, God. And let us have a clear understanding of how to listen to your voice, Lord. That's what we all should desire in our hearts. And I pray that these principles, God, show us that the voice that we need to listen to always is yours, not someone else's, God, and most of all, not even our own. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Verse 14. For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. You know, being a man who follows Jesus, very frequently, I have experienced, like many of you, being led by the Spirit of God. 
But many times, I'm not going to lie, I have to question myself. I have to question rather, is it me leading myself, the flesh? Is it the devil? Because the devil always tries to whisper in her ear. Or is it God? When I was reflecting on this message, I realized that when I was younger in the Lord, it was much easier to hear his voice to me. Why? Because I was young in the Lord. I wasn't as mature as I am now. His grace was on me. He knew I wasn't mature in the Lord. The Lord knew that I didn't have the understanding, or I guess the understanding as a baby in God. Therefore, he would often, it would often be this crazy joy knowing that I heard his voice. But then, as years started going by and serving God, little by little, I heard less and less of his voice. Why? Because I was learning, we were learning the word of God more. And God understood, and we must understand, that his standard is much higher in the maturity that we have. We must understand that as we know the Lord for all these years, He's not going to speak to us if we're not living right for Him. Yes, He has grace, but it's like, it's like talking to a child. You know they're innocent. You know they don't know any better. So of course you're going to have the patience with them. But a man and woman of God that have been saved for many years, God expects a very high standard from us. That's why it's so important to be very careful how we hear and what we hear as mature men and women of God. I always pray. In the book of Luke 8, verses 18, Jesus said, Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. In other words, be alert how we hear something. You know why? Because it's not what you and I hear. One cannot help what he hears, but he can take heed how he hears it when something is said. It's so important, amen, to know that as a mature man and woman of God, like Pastor always says, not everything that glitters is gold. Many men and false prophets and devils out there, they can speak elegant words. But it is the Spirit of God inside of us that discerns whether or not that's God's voice, the devil's, or ours. Because sometimes in a vulnerable moment, Somebody can lead you astray by speaking words. Somebody can actually take you away from God's plan by their elegant words. Someone who knows the Bible, who might know the Bible a little more than you and they're quoting scripture, it's impressive. Trust me. It's impressive. But that's why prayer comes in. None of us are exempt from these attacks. None of us are so holy that the enemy cannot whisper something in our ears and not affect our lives when our guard is down. There's a perfect example of that found in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 11 through 13. Before I read that scripture, I believe Elijah in that scripture, just before he flee to a cave, scared from rumors that Jezebel was going to kill him after she killed the prophets. What blew my mind is this powerful man of God, just before somebody just told him a rumor that Jezebel was after him, he called fire from the sky. 
He called on God, and God put fire on the altar that was filled with water, so that the priests of Balaam, amen, would know who is the true living God. Before all that happened, he caused so many signs and wonders. He was the prophet, one of God's top prophets that was living at that particular time. But you know what? I don't, I don't know the exact circumstances or where he was at. But the devil truly whispered in his mind. He heard the wrong voice. He heard the wrong voice. And it cost him dearly. It cost him to flee. How many know that when you and I are strong in the Lord, we flee from nothing? When a man and woman of God truly are in tune with the voice of God, they fear nothing but the Lord. Now let me read scripture of what happened in this particular point. 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 11 to 13. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. Behold, the Lord is about to pass. In other words, the Lord was going to speak to him. He was going to look for the Lord through his discouragement. Verses, okay, still verse 14, 11. About to pass. And a great and mighty wind tore into the mountain, and it shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. When Elijah heard it, in other words, God's voice, he wrapped his face in a cloak and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? A small, still voice came to Elijah in his discouragement, this man of God who can call fire from the sky. And God told him, What are you doing, Elijah? I don't know if God is speaking right now to somebody who's listening. But is he telling you, what are you doing in this place that you're at? Elijah was in a cave. Elijah was in a place where he really couldn't be used by God because of fear. Are you in a place right now, in a circumstance, where you really cannot be used by God because of what you're doing? Listen to the voice of God if he's telling you, what are you doing here? Why are you in this place? Who whispered in your ear and caused you to flee? Try to flee from the Lord in a cave. Who put fear or sin in your life where God has to say those words? What are you doing here? If Elijah, this powerful man of God, can be there, so can we if we're not careful. Not only was he there, but he was listening to God in the wrong manner. You see, after fire came, a still small voice came. Amen. And verse 12. So many times God comes. We must understand this by reading the scripture. God comes in a very gentle, calm voice when he speaks to us. That's why my wife knows, and I personally will say this, I'm very careful when someone's screaming and shouting, and then they try to come up to me and say, Thus saith the Lord! Because in reading the scriptures, God isn't a loud voice like that. Or if someone tries to whisper in your ear, 
God told me to do this. I'll go back in my prayer closet and see, God, was that really you? And also, I cannot tell somebody that. Because we must understand when we read this scripture that God's voice, it wasn't in the shaking of the ground, the earthquake. It wasn't in the wind. Many times people try to bring the wrong wind of doctrine into our ears. And like the wind, you never know which direction it's going to come from. You never know. Amen. Who's going to say it? But oftentimes you must realize and tune our ears to the voice of God. Not everything that gives you goosebumps is God. Not everything that makes you feel good is God. And not everything that speaks loud and valium is God. Or Master or Savior, He is like a Father, as He calls us His sons and daughters. And as a Father, when we are discouraged, do they yell at you? <laughs> no. When you and I are going through something, when I was thinking about how a father talks to somebody, I was thinking of my grandfather, Papa. I hardly ever heard him yell in my life. He was very calm. His voice was so soothing and loving. And I thought that's how God speaks to us in our distress. When we're in the worst place we can be in. That's why we must understand the voice of God. Give Him a chance to speak to us when we're going through things. Because God knows when we're going through things, through things, our mind goes all these different directions. When we go through things, we're trying so hard, every scheme, everything you can think of, and in all reality, we want to be like Elijah and just hide from the world and go into a cave. I don't want to deal with this. Or you know what? I don't want to even face it. I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm not going to read my texts. And I'm just going to lay in the dark like a cave. But how many know we can, no matter what we do as a child of God, we cannot shut off his voice the only two voices we could never shut off is our own and God's the mind is constantly thinking and the child of God the Lord is constantly trying to get our attention praise the Lord that's why we must guard our hearts constantly we must always pray and know that Wisdom from God comes from above. Because as believers, if we're not careful, things in our hearts we might harbor. And if we do not examine ourselves and fully ask God to show us what is in our hearts, things like James describes in James chapter 3, verses 13. Verses 13 through 17. He says, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition and your heart, um, do not boast about, about it or deny the truth. In other words, don't boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. Verse 16. For where you have envy, selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil presence. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace, loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere. Amen. The wisdom 
I'm going to go on to chapter, verse 15. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. What is unspiritual and of the devil? If you have envy, selfish ambition. You know what I found in my life of serving God for so many years? A man and woman of God who is truly walking right with the Lord. There's no disorder in their life. Yes, we have trials. We have tribulations. But through all that, there's a peace. Knowing that God will take care of it. But somebody who is so called a child or daughter of God, it says it right here. They do not have this. Instead of saying, God, I trust in you, they'll have envy, selfish ambition, disorder, and every evil practice. These are the things that come from somebody, amen, who is not fully hearing the voice of God. That's why we got to be very careful who, amen, disciples us. Look at their life. They might not have a lot of money, but they might have peace more than people with money. Look at their life. What comes out of their mouth? Yes, they might not talking God all day and night. It's impossible. But you know what? Just being someone who is sincere for God. You feel a love that you will not fear, I mean feel, around a normal person. It is sincere. It is impartial. It doesn't judge on what someone else does. Those are truly men and women that hear the voice of God. That's why it's so important. Read the book of James when you have a chance. This portion of, of Scripture in James, it shows us how to truly discern the voice of God. You know what I learned a long time ago? At first, because I didn't study right. And I tell my wife this. I thought discerning people was calling them out on their sin. Man, I felt spiritual. <laughs> I thought that discerning somebody, amen, meant like I'm judging them. That's, that's an, Im an immature Christian. That is not what discerning is. That's not God. Until one time I read a Smith Wigglesworth book. And he said, discern yourself for 12 months. And you'll never want to discern someone again. I've done that. Man, are we full of wickedness. But thank God, amen, for his pure and heavenly wisdom. After that... In verse 17, you know what comes when you and I truly hear the voice of God? Not only wisdom from above, but it comes pure, then peace, loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and very importantly, good fruit. Good fruit comes when you and I hear the voice of God. Love, joy, peace, the fruit of the Spirit comes when you and I hear the voice of God. So I want you to ask yourself, in trying your best to grow in the things of God, trying to learn about Jesus, trying to know His love, His voice, His direction, what has been going on in your mind to discern God's voice? What is going on, more importantly, in your life to discern God's voice? You see, when a man and woman follow God and we read our word, amen, I know what I'm after. I'm after His righteousness. That's the voice of God. Because before I knew God, I didn't care about righteousness. 
All I cared about was money, worldly things, and getting high. I'm being honest with you. But now we are different. Now as a son of God, amen, I look for his voice. And I know the Lord's voice because his voice, amen, those that are trying to discern it, it is fear, full of pure, godly holiness. That's when you know you're being led by God. He will tell you like Elijah, what are you doing in this place? Don't you know that I'm a God of pure, godly holiness? I hope that you and I are living that way because that's what God expects from us that have been saved for years. Pure, godly holiness. Amen. Not only that, if God is leading us, we must notice that through the years of knowing and listening to God's voice, and not our own, I know this isn't our own, we will be filled and being led full of God's mercy. I know some of you people looking were very mean before, like I was. There was no none of God's mercy inside of us. We didn't care if we offended somebody. We were so full of judgment, but that's not so now that we're following Christ. Now that we're following Christ and we are being led by His voice and not our own. When we pray, we should be full of God's mercy. Because if not, amen, God's voice is full of mercy or voice the flesh and the devil is full of being judgmental towards others. That is the difference between God and us. He is full of grace and mercy. We are full of judgment. Also, amen, when we know that we are being led by God's voice and not alone, we will a hundred percently, percently, I don't even know if that's a real word, but a hundred percent bear good fruit. What does that mean? By bearing good fruit means that when a man and woman of God want to grow more, or they just want to simply be in God's presence, they can be right by your side and fill it. And bearing good fruit, read Galatians, amen. What chapter? 22? The fruit of the Spirit. Read the fruit of the Spirit and you will bear these things when you are listening to God's voice. But when it is not God's voice, and we are all guilty of this, being saved rather, the flesh will always try to cause harm to others just because you don't like somebody doesn't mean you got to get everybody who you know not to like them that's the devil that is the devil that is unfruitful and you know what you'll never grow if you stay in that place and I will truly admit I've been in that place before I've tried to crush people that upset me but you know what through prayer and seeking God and through His grace, I have changed. I hope. Amen. Because we must everly, everly increase the heavenly wisdom of God. Because too many men and women are being led astray. They're being led astray by do different doctrines that don't make sense. Or different interpretations because they're not reading their word right. Or they're listening to a so-called spiritually filled person on YouTube or by a scripture on Instagram or Facebook. And instead of listening to God's voice, they're listening to their own. Oh, that filled me with happiness. It must be true. That's not true. God doesn't always fill us with happiness. The Holy Spirit convicts us. The Holy Spirit, amen, is a consuming fire that will chaff us and make us pure as gold 
That's why it's so important to know, like in verse 15, what isn't of God. In, in the book of James, verse 15. It is whatever is earthly is unspiritual, and it is truly of the devil. A selfish ambition? What is a selfish ambition? Well, I've learned and been in ministry for a little while. Ministry is okay to go for. But the devil will fight you in that ministry and put a selfishness in there. Especially if you want a ministry and someone else got it and you wanted it. I always take it like, okay, Lord, you're so powerful, I'm going to go for another one. But an earthly voice will say, put envy in your heart. An earthly voice, or from the devil, will have you do everything to cause harm to that person's ministry. Like what? Watching them under a microscope, trying to rat on them for everything they do wrong. That's of the devil. Instead of helping them in their ministry. Humbling yourself and saying, you know what? I'm so blessed that you got this ministry. Can I help you? Or, you know what, God? That must have not been for me. Let me build myself. Let me hear your voice. Reestablish my walk. And let me have the fullness of what you have for me. That's the God we serve. Amen. You know when the that scripture before I close? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 says, Follow the way of love and earnestly, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. To me, that is the greatest part of our walk with God. It's to continuously desire the spiritual gifts from Jesus. And there are nine spiritual gifts. When you and I desire these things, amen, before you know it, we will, without even realizing it, help build the church. How do you help build the church? You help build the church members. Because when you and I have strong church members, we have a strong church. And when you and I help build a church member in tune, they can help build someone else. And before you know it, we are all, amen, in tune to God's voice and not our own. We are all becoming stepping stones for each other instead of stumbling blocks. So with that being said, give God your time. Put some time away so that you and I can truly listen to His voice. In conclusion, in Psalms 46, verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. And it says, It is in, in stillness, not busyness, that we tune our spiritual ears to hear the voice of God. Church, the Lord always speaks to us in that still, small voice. The Lord always speaks to us in that still, small voice. Like my son is speaking in the background in a still, small voice. <laughs> God is good to us. And I believe with all my heart that He is never silent to us when we walk in His pure and holiness. If you don't hear His voice, look at His character. He is talking to you and I how to live. Amen. Read the book of Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And you will truly see what God expects from us when we hear His voice. So with that being said, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for the privilege and honor of all of us believers 
that hear your voice. I pray that you help us all grow in holiness, purity, and righteousness, God. And like, and like in the book of Matthew chapter 5, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I just pray that you just help us, Lord. So with that being said, I just want to ask anybody, if you want to know the Lord as your Savior, just bow your head and repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus, I come to you as a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe you came down and died for my sins and that you hung on the cross for me. And this day I accept you in my heart as my Lord and Savior. Strengthen me, guide me, and most of all, help me to hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any special prayers that you need, just messenger me, and my wife and I will pray for you. God bless you. Hope to see you Sunday at church. Goodbye.